Visitors to Japan may know Tokyo's Asakusa district for its famous Sensoji Temple. It is less well known that the area is also a refuge for Tokyo's homeless population. Not far from Sensoji, the small temple Ko Shou-in offers aid for those who live and sleep on the streets. One of my previous videos shows how I met the head priest of Ko Shou-in, Yoshimizu Gakugen, not at his temple, but at the Vietnam temple Dai Onji, northwest of Tokyo. This time, his connection with the Vietnamese Buddhist community brought me to his own temple in Tokyo, where preparations for the eye-opening ceremony of a two-ton heavy Kanon statue from Vietnam were in full swing. More on that in a different video. Here it wasn't the statue that caught my attention, but an unexpected visitor. <笑>あの、あの、<笑> お墓はここにあるはい。ホスピスのホスピスのお墓がはい。ない。いや、ホスピスのそう、身寄りがない人たちの入るホスピスなんですね。だから日本ではその用意して、ま、買ってきてくださって。そのホスピスはキリスト教のあの方が始めたものなんですが、今ではそのホスピスの上のチャペルにもですね、あの礼拝堂にもあの観音様が置いてあんちさせてもらっていて、仏教徒もキリスト教徒も一緒に手が合わ
キリスト教の愛の象徴と悟りの象徴両方ともですね胸につけた観音様になっていてここには先ほど言ったようにホスピスとか NPO の関係の人たちも眠りますそういう団体の方々にはキリスト教徒の方もいらっしゃいますから仏教徒もキリスト教徒も一緒に手が合わせられるようにしたかったのでそれであのような観音様にしてもらったんですねそうですかで今から紹介しますがいくつかの NPO のお墓がありますがそこは決して大きなものではないのでいっぱいにすぐになる,だとなるんだと思いますでもそのお墓に入る人たちのお骨を少し全部じゃないんだけれどもあらかじめ粉にさせてもらっていくばっかをあの中にも入れさせてもらったりお墓がいっぱいになった時にあちらで一緒に入る私も入りますあとはこのお寺の檀家さんで身寄りがなくなった人たちもまたこの中に入っていきますそういうみんなのお墓のような役割もあるのがこの観音供養塔ですじゃあちょっとこちらに行ってみましょうか先ほどの女性がお参りに来たのはこちらの希望の家というお墓ですねここもあのホスピスですが NPO が運営をしているんですでカトリックのすごく熱心な信者さんだった男性が建てた施設なんですが今その方はあの体調を崩されていて今は別の方が施設長になっているんですけれどもあのその時にですね変わられる時に私もぜひ中に入ってっていうことで一緒に理事にさせてもらって、まあ、時折こう見守りに行ったりお参りに行ったりというようなことをしています。今日はお一方亡くなった方がいらっしゃるので、後でお経をあげに行こうと思っています。で、こちらがその希望の家のお墓ですね。希望の家。はい。はい。で、こちらがですね。今、まあ、前からご紹介させてもらっている。由比の墓という新宿のそのホームレス状態の方々を支援する団体。え、四つの団体の合同のお墓になっています。私がこの路上生活者の支援とかまたはそういった方々に関わるきっかけになったのも実はこのお墓の話からだったんですね身寄りがない人たち元路上生活の人たち今路上生活の人たちの最後を看取っていく場所が欲しいそういうような願いを受けてお墓を作ることにしたんですがどこに行ってもなかなか建てさせてもらえるものではないので。新宿から離れてるけれども日雇い労働の町でやった「三夜ならぜひに」と言ってくれたのでそれでこのお寺にこのお墓が建つことになりましたこの上からこの「このみよい」という字が入っている石から上の部分はあのもともとお寺にあったんですね使ってない石がでもここから下の部分は、えー、石がなかったのであの当時は私がアルバイトをして、えー、建てさせてもらいました今だとねそういうふうに認定 NPO などに宗教者が何か大きな寄付をするとあのなんか勘違いされることもあるようでなかなかそういうことは今できなくなりましたけれども大事なお墓ですね私もいっぱいそうそうそう教えてもらう人がいっぱい入ってますねそれから NPO のお墓はまだ他にもありまして奥側にあるのが三遊会といってあのこの三夜であのー、もう40年以上活動している医療と、まあ、生活のさまざまな面をサポートする NPO 団体です代表の方は、えー、カナダのケベック州から来ているルポジャンという名前の、あのー、在日の、ね、外国籍の方でしかも宣教師として日本に来られた方なんです。今はそういうことは一切なんかこうかなぐり捨てて本当に路上に暮らしている人たちやここであの暮らす、まあ、土屋とかで暮らしている人たちと全く同じような目線で生活をしています本当に優しい人ですねでこの代表のジャンさんはもちろんキリスト教の信仰だと思いますけれどもでも亡くなった人たちがここに眠るなら僕もここに入るっておっしゃっていて。それは大事なポイントだと思いますね。あの私たち、まあ、宗教学者もそうだし、一般の方もそういう宗教を考えると、うんまあ、どの宗教にの属しているかとかのメンバーですか、うん、ということで
もしかしたらそうじゃなくてその人間関係とか場所のつながりみたいなものがそれの方が大事だというようなこと、ね、いや本当大事でこのお墓を建てた時も彼がすごく親しくしていたある男性あの急に亡くなってしまって若かったんですけど亡くなってしまって。遺骨はご実家に引き取られることになったんですけれどもそしてジャンさんがその方のためにご実家遠くの方なんですがついて行かれた時に何かなんかこう悪いものというか自分のお家の恥をさらすものというようなそういうような冷たい目で見られしかもその亡くなった大事な、まあ、彼は本当友人であり兄弟だと言っていましたがその亡くなった人のことを、まあ、本当にただただこうお墓に入れてしまって誰もそこに手を合わせるような感覚ではなかった捨て置かれるような感覚が感じられて本当に寂しかったんだっていうんですねそれで彼はやっぱり自分たちの仲間が一緒に入る場所が欲しいっていうふうに考えてみんなでこの三遊会のお墓を建てることにしたんですね。あのお墓を建てる時にはクラウドファンンディングをやりました、うん、生きている間も死んでからも無縁であり続けられる社会なんておかしいんじゃないかってそう感じてそのことを発信しようと言ってあえてクラウドファンディングにしたんですねでできたお墓がこちらのお墓でしたえっもうちょっとそのクラウドファンディングはそのパソコンのインターネットを持って、はい、みんなに情報してそのクラウドファンディングしますというようにうはい先ほどもらって、はい、あの聞いてもいいですかどのぐらいかかるんですかその石とかいやそんなに100万ぐらいのことだと思うんですけども、はいはい、いやお金がなかったわけではなくて、はい、むしろ無縁のまま生きられて、はい、無縁のまま死ぬ誰ともつながらずに最後を迎えて、はい、最後を迎えた後も誰も関わりなく生きてたことの証すら何も残らないようなそういうことが当たり前の社会になっていって本当にいいんだろうかって。そんな問いかけをちゃんと社会に発信したかったんですねはいはいはいここで山谷で亡くなっていく身寄りのない人たちもまたこの山谷だけではなくいろんな全国のいろんなところで仕事をして生きてきた方ですよ精一杯生きてきたのにそれは人としての価値は何ら他の人たちともちろん変わらないのにもかかわらずこう本当に孤独の中にそのなんていうのかな体が悪くなりまあ、親族が亡くなったり関係が悪くなったりすると本当に孤独になっていくことが当たり前になっていくなんていうのはうん寂しいことではないだろうか本当に悲しいことではないだろうかって考えて本当にこのままで社会が進んでいいのだろうかっていうそういうメッセージを出すためにあえて三遊会のメンバーは若手が集まってですね SNS でいろいろ発信をしてこの三遊という町のこともいろいろ知ってもらえるように、えー、クラウドファンディングを立ち上げたんですねで私も勉強になりましたたくさんの寄付を皆さんがしてくださった中に LGBTQ の方からの連絡もありました私も家族はいるけれどお墓のことを考えた時にそこに私は入れない血のつながりがある人は生きているけれどもでもつながっている人ではないそれはかえって余計に孤独を感じることでもあって路上に暮らしたり山谷で生きていったまた山谷で最後を迎えていく人たちは自分たちと無関係ではないって思えたから、うん、少しでも寄付させてほしいってやっぱり大事なことだと思いましたそれがこの三遊会ですでこのコスモスは訪問看護ステーションのお墓です<笑>この山谷で20年以上訪問看護をやってるんですねやはり山谷は身寄りがなくたった一人で暮らしている高齢の方々がもう20年前から多かったんですよ日雇い仕事をして一人で暮らしてきた人たちが最後を迎えていくにも病気がありますそういう人たちのことも等しくちゃんと見守っていきたいっていう看護師さんたちが作ったステーションなんですこの訪問看護ステーションはこの山谷にはなくてはならないとても大事なところなんですけれどもこの看護師さんたちは関われば関わるほどもっとして差し上げたいって思うんですねでも人は必ずなくなりますしもっと本当はここまでして差し上げたかったって思ってもでも
亡くなってしまうんですよねその時に彼女たちは亡くなった後かもしれないけれど自分たちでちゃんとお参りができる時にいろんなまた亡くなった後も会話ができる場所が必要だったんだろうと思います、うん、何よりもね身寄りがない人たちの最後を見とるために彼らはその自分たちのステーションの近くにアパートを今作っていてそのアパートに引っ越させるんです身寄りがない人たちをそれで本当に最後まで全部見とるんですねで遺骨の引き取りがなければ自分たちが引き取ってそれをその方たちのことを亡くなった後までちゃんと見ていけるようにそう思って建てられたのがこのコスモスのお墓ですつながりっていろんな形があるけれどお墓はそういう関係性を大切にするための大事な象徴で亡くなったら終わりではない世界をちゃんとちゃんとみんな感じていて生きてる間だって死んだ先まで生きてる間だけれども自分が死んでもちゃんと見てくれる死んだ後まで見てくれるって思えたら全部を任せられるじゃないですか生きてる時だけじゃない死んだ後まで見てくれるんですそんな人たちだって思えたらどれだけ安心できるでしょう本当に本当にトータルな総合的な看護を考えて本当にその人の痛みに向き合うような看護師さんたちの集まりがこのコスモスですね私もこういうところにご縁がいただけていろいろ教えてもらっていますでこういうお墓がいっぱいにいっぱいになった後あのー、入る場所足りなくなるかもしれませんねいっぱいになるというかなんかどのぐらいですか小さなお骨つぼに分骨することでコスモスの場合などは今もう50人以上の人があの中に入っています、うん、でその分骨するお骨以外のお骨はこの中に一緒になっていますで今挙げた4つのお墓以外にも他の NPO や、まあ、やはり身寄りがない方々のケアを行っている、まあ、キリスト教のシスターだとかそういった方々がご縁のある方をここにあのお連れくださるのでそういった方もこの中に入りますし自殺自死で亡くした大事な方のことをやはり放っておけなくて誰もが生まれに来るここにということであのお連れくださる方もいます。何より私もうまく言えませんが私は関わった方々とここで一緒に入れたら私も嬉しいですしねきっとここの観覧雇用とはとてもにぎやかなんじゃないかなと思っています観音様自体はですね東北の震災の時に知り合ったあの物資さんで、えー、平等院法王堂の国宝の雲中供養菩薩という仏像を一人で直したりとかレプリカを作ったりするような立派な仏師さんに会うことができてそれで私の無理な要望もちゃんと聞いてくださっていろいろ考えてくださったんですね右手の雫は観音様は指から植えたものにお乳を出してくれるミルクを出してくれるっていうんですねでもやっぱり山野はお酒じゃないかって<笑>言って透明な雫になっていますでもさっきのねジャンさんの故郷はカナダですけどケベック州はフランス語圏だそうですねフランス語ではお酒は命の水とか言うんですねだからこれは命の水だっていうふうに言っとこうと言っています<笑>面白い左手はですね伝統的な仏像の形でもう怖くないよ恐れをなくすための手の手形なんですでも作る際には武士さんといろいろやり取りをしたんです本当に優しい手って何だろうってで看護師を長年してた方が言ったんですねきっと優しい手はこうやって中指が少し出て前に伸びた手なんだって、うん、なんでだと思いますなんで,で私も聞いて納得でした病気でもしくは辛くてかがんでる人がいたら声をかけますねその時まず出てくる手がこの手ですよねどうされましたかって多分こういう手が出るんですよで背中をさすろうとしたりとか肩に手を当てるかもしれない不安が大きい人をそのまま抱えるかもしれないでも最初に出てくる手がこの手なのでそして怖い辛い不安だって言ってる人にどうされましたかって
言いながらこう多分手が出るんですねもう大丈夫だからっていう時もこう相手に触れるようにして伸ばされた手がこの形なんだろうと思うんですねもう大丈夫だよって言ってだから、はい、ああ観音様の手優しい手にしようって考えたけど最終的には古い形のセムインという院に落ち着いたのは私も驚いたことで勉強になりましただからここに来た人たちもここに入る人たちももう大丈夫だからって思ってもらえたらいいなとそして宗教によってバラバラではなくて違う宗教だけどキリスト教も仏教も関係なくここで一緒に祈りが捧げられて手を合わせて大切な人のことを一緒に思えるようにっていうのがここの観音供養堂を作った理由なんですね。でこの観音供養堂でいつ設立されたか2017年だったと思います。あの三遊会のお墓ができてすぐにあの工事をしました。三遊会さんがやっぱりね宣教師さんが代表でキリスト者の方もたくさんいらっしゃいます。私も一緒にこう活動しているしで亡くなった人は仏教徒もキリスト教徒もどちらも仲良しですからだから早く作りたかったですし私もこの中入るようにしておけば安心かなと思って、うん<笑>はい、生きている間に結んだご縁ってとっても大事でこの大事な友人たちと死んだ後も一緒にいられたらもっと元気に生きていけるって言った人がいるんですよ。やっぱりそれはすごく大事な生きる力であって死んだら終わりとか死んだ後のことは関係ないってことはなくてやっぱりいつ死ぬかわからないけど今いる大事な仲間たちとずっと一緒にいられるってそう約束してもらえたらやっぱり最後を迎える時の迎え方も違います本当に安心できるんです迎え方が違いますはいあとは先立った人たちを見送っていきますね見送っていくことが自分が見送られていくことの安心感を得ることにもなるんですああこんなふうに温かくみんなで送ってくれるんだって分かればその場所にいることやその人たちといることが本当に安心感に変わっていくんですね、うん、だから意味があるし生きてるうちからこの観音様にお参りしていくことでああお願いしますねって<笑>私たち人間の約束だけではなくて仏や菩薩または神様ともね約束をしていくことになるでしょうからそれはきっと本人にとっての大きな安心になるんですありがとうございます、はい、きれい素敵綺麗ですね<笑>本当はその道みたいがあって<笑>じゃあい,、ね、いいえいいえ雨をやんでよかったね,ね今日は雨なんですごいですよ昨日の夜大丈夫でしたかん大雨でしたああ大丈夫でしたよ<笑>すごく心配です4時ぐらいにメッセージくれてあ出発したとオープニングなんかまだ忙しくて夜まで、ええ、なんか、うん、心配でしたけど大丈夫でしたよいやすごい先生持ってないのマークの前上,上に一人行ったらいいかもしれないうわすごい先生もどうぞ先生もどうぞ先生どうぞ,先生どうぞ,先生どうぞすいませんじゃあ私もごめんなさい引用させてくださいあ、そのぐらいがいいかも。<笑>では、取ります。ちょっと、はい。いきます。すごいですね。はい。はい。もう、はい、ば。横でも。はい。もう、はい、ば。はい。オッケー。オッケー。Let's go. Let's go. Hello, everyone, and welcome、uh, from Manchester. <laughs> It's hard to believe, but I'm not on a vacation here. Thanks to the School of Arts, Languages, and Cultures at the University of Manchester, and thanks to Professor Erika b e r f e l l i I am、uh, now a lecturer in Japanese studies. So I left my position in Japan for this. It's a new stage. Feels a little bit like a holiday, but <laughs> I've had a very productive time already teaching now. Japanese、uh, religions and courses on Buddhism, and I'm so happy to be,、um, to be here and to have the opportunity to、um, discuss the video you just saw about、well, graves for the homeless in Japan. I've been studying only briefly in 2011 the Hitosachi no Kai, or One Spoonful Association. 
a Pure Land Buddhism affiliated volunteer initiative in care for the homeless in Tokyo. Yoshimizu Gakugen founded the association in 2009. To explore this association and its activities, I joined the volunteers for a nightly walk through Asakusa in Tokyo, where we delivered homemade rice balls and tea to the homeless population. I mainly, though, focused on disaster-related initiatives and Buddhist responses to the 2011 earthquake and tsunami in Japan. More recently, Erika Pafeli has studied the Hitosachi no Kai from a different angle, namely with a, is that correct, a focus on minorities. Well, well Erika, why don't you introduce yourself and how, uh, what you're doing here and yeah. Okay, um, so welcome to Manchester team. Um, it is an honor to have you here now. So my name is Erika Baffelli. I'm professor of Japanese studies at the University of Manchester and I've been in Manchester since 2013. I was in New Zealand before at Otago University as a senior lecturer in Asian religions and in Japan before it. So my main area of expertise is um, religion in contemporary Japan and I've been working on issues related to religion and media, the so-called new religions, um, more recently religion and emotion and temporalities. Uh, so how did I meet Hito, Hito Saji no Kai was your question. I not, guess. not, yeah, so more broadly like what, what um, if you watch the video, uh, you can hear my surprise or the surprise in my voice because when I first visited Yoshimizu san, uh, the head priest shown at Ko Shoin, I. Is he the head priest or the vice head priest? So the high head priest now. Surprised. Okay. You can hear the surprise in my voice when he said, like, there are graves for the homeless and for. Uh, clients who live in hospice nearby, the Kibono here. I went there in 2021 to study the arrival, <laughs> to witness the arrival or inauguration of a two-ton cannon a bodhisattva statue from Vietnam at his temple and that was my reason to go there. However, when I first went there, be between 2011 and 2021, a lot has changed it seems like. And all these connections between his temple and these very various graves and the NPOs, NGOs, um, that these graves are for or dedicated mm -hmm. to. This is something I wasn't really aware of. This is the part, if I am correct, that you were studying. Is that right? So my uh, meeting, uh, my start with my first meeting with Hito Sajinokai is in 2018. I apply for a grant um, in, in the UK with a Professor uh, Takahashi Norihito from Toyo University and our project was about religion and minority and we wanted to look at issues related to minorities and marginalities and religious organization that included both how minority religions are defined but also how minority groups found their space inside a mainstream or larger religion organization but and also how some religion organization works with minorities mm -hmm. um, so we visited several groups in the uk and in japan mm -hmm. and when we did the field work in japan in august 2019 one of the members of our team suggested to go and meet Yoshimitsu and he took Saji no Kai to hear about their work on Sanya with, mm. with the homeless there. Can you explain a little bit what Sanya is? So Sanya is an area of Tokyo that is between, now split between two Tokyo words, mm. so Arakawa and Taito, and it used to be known as one of the area for the day laborers used to live. In temporary or very simple not temporary, but very simple accommodation called doya. Mm -hmm. And this was mainly something in the post-war um, and later period. Nowadays, the day laborers market is disappearing, mm -hmm. but those kind of accommodation are still there. And those doya now are usually, uh, the people living there tend to be elderly people, former day laborers or ex-convicts. Uh, who don't have any other place to go. 
and living in those simple accommodation help them to be able to access uh, welfare support, for example, because they have an address and also to access uh, uh, medical visits um in at, at their at their accommodation so they are now called more something like welfare accommodation mm -hmm. and sanya has been transformed quite a lot in the last two decades it's became more gentrified but they still have this feeling of a place where people that don't know where to go go to live and the interesting thing about Yoshimitsu's temple is that it's in the center of Sanya. Mm -hmm. So it had this very string, st strong link with, with the neighborhood. Uh, he was born there, he was raised there, so there is this very strong identity with the, the connection between the temple and the local people. And this is also represented in what you were saying about the connection with several other organizations working in the area like Kibonoye, the hospice, mm. um, or several other MPOs or organizations working with elderly people or with row sleepers. Mm. So people who live in, in, the, in the street. Mm. So I think the important thing about those graves that we have seen in your, mm. in your video is that the idea of creating link for people that don't have connection. Mm. So giving them an opportunity to have a connection of some sort. And this is something that you can see done by Hito no Kai, but also with several other organizations in the area that try to create this sort of connection between them, between the volunteer and the people uh, in, on the street. So there is this very strong a focus on on creating a connection or being with which is another word that they use quite quite a lot this idea of being with mm. so not just giving something as as charity uh, so not just giving food but si sitting down talking with the people listening to their stories etc mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and what struck me was to hear uh, Yoshimizu talk about the LGBT community and you know Maybe people have a family, but necessarily don't have, but they don't necessarily have the support from their family and don't want to be maybe connected with them, considering the rejection. That's something I think, yeah. Yeah, a lot of the idea of Sanya is this idea of people that um, have cut, some of them have cut off the relationship with their former family. Mm -hmm. So they are, uh, in, so they, they, they live there. So people that had, um, several uh, evenements in their past or uh, for several reasons they ended up cutting off all the relationship with their former family or they are they don't have a family anymore um, but uh, this new community is created and some of these MPO we visited with, with Yoshimitsu uh, create also space for these people to meet mm. Um, in, in until a few years ago, there was one of these shopping streets in Sanya. Uh, they used to be the gather point uh, for, for people on the street, but it's deteriorated and the roof was not safe anymore and, and it was dismantled and not rebuilt anymore. Uh, so there was a, a, some other organization that are now providing space for, for people to meet and have a drink or have a chat, but also have access to, um, to doctors, for example, or nurses is, is another important service that they provide. Because a lot of these uh, people are mainly men and usually quite elderly. So health is, is, a, is another important issue. It's very important, it seems, to find opportunities or venues where to reach out to people locally, right? Have you observed any comparable initiative or temple in, in other parts of Japan? I'm, I'm sure there are, but I mm. haven't really looked into it. I know that there are several other initiatives around Tokyo, a main one in Shinjuku, another one in a temple um, close to where I, I stayed last year, that are they, they do food distribution, for example. So there are several other initiatives. Um, and um, Shirahaze Tatsuya has written quite a lot on a faith-based 
religion organization in Japan that works with with homeless, for example. So there definitely are other uh, organization. For me, what was interesting in Hito Saji no Kai was, of course, the the relationship with the neighborhood, but also this other relationship that they had with their own volunteers. Uh, because one interesting aspect that you mentioned early on was that Ito Sajinokai had a large number of Vietnamese young right. people uh, as working as volunteer with them, mm. at least until the beginning of the pandemic. Mm. So they also had this very strong connection with um, Vietnamese Buddhist communities living in, in, in Japan and especially in the Tokyo area. And that was another aspect we were interested in, mm -hmm. in the, with the idea of religious minority and migration in, mm -hmm. in Japan. Very interesting. And am I correct that this is ongoing research? So will, you will yeah. be back in Japan to further investigate this. I hope you have a discussion um, afterwards. <laughs> We've, for the next 152 weeks, <laughs> we, we will explore We the were dynamic. going to do an episode every week on <laughs> yes. this. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I look forward to hearing uh, more about this and hopefully read more about this from you and your colleagues. And One yeah. one aspect that interests me, I don't know if you want to put it or not, but one aspect that really interests me is how this connection between this organization that tend to be quite well connected, but quite small per mm. se, um, create link that continues over time and allowed also for very um, for action when something happened. So, for example, you mentioned that you met Yoshimitsu after the 311, or you know, in, in the relief work for the 311. Mm -hmm. And I, when I was um, attending some of their volunteer uh, work last year, I I remember rice arriving from Tohoku be sent down. Mm -hmm to be redistributed um, in the food pantry, the, the temple also run uh, uh, as a sign, and this connection has been created after 311. And the Buddhist community, the Vietnamese Buddhist community was sending masks, for example, to be distributed to the homeless. Mm -hmm. So this kind of connection that is created, that is created all this link between this organization. And at the same time, he took Sajin Okai was supporting uh, Vietnamese uh, people that were stranded in Japan during mm -hmm. the, the pandemic because they couldn't go back to Vietnam. Yeah. So there, I'm quite interested in how these networks works and what they produce and what they can tell us about Buddhism in contemporary exactly. Japan, uh, which is a question I'm still exploring. Yeah, fascinating. And I think it only shows the importance to look at religion or Buddhism now in particular, not only as a teaching or what kind of rituals or practices or beliefs uh, Buddhism provides in times of crisis, but to show how in practice those networks, um, you know, are facilitated like in response to certain disasters now they play out in the future in different crisis scenarios. I think these and what you brought into um, focus here, the local aspect of religion mm -hmm. and uh, society that I mean, that requires further further study. Sure. I think there is yeah. this aspect of the uh, immediately response when a crisis of a disaster happen and having these links allowed to a very prompt response because the connections exactly. are already there. Yeah. But at the same time, they create long term connection. And those graves are the very long term connection. Yeah. <laughs> a connection that will go in the afterlife, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's not just a temporary helping the homeless with giving them food yeah. or helping them filling in the paperwork, but creating a connection that is actually taken even mm. in the afterlife. So there is a more a present response, but there is also a look at the future is a kind of double temporalities exactly. uh, on, on those activities yeah. that I think also worth exploring. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not just something you do one off uh, to respond to a crisis, mm. but it's a much a long term vision. That's what I've been looking into as well. The long term prospect, the long term, let's say, transformation of projects, relief initiatives that started, say, in the wake of the March 2011 tsunami, but have since been expanded to contribute to society at large. I think that's very 
a very important case to long-term follow this. And as Levi McLaughlin, for instance, pointed out, religious um, practitioners were the first, often are often the first mm -hmm. to move in, mobilize aid in, in times when, like a large-scale catastrophe, like when the state or government are not able to provide aid efficiently and quickly. This, but they are also often the ones who stay the longest, right? Or con but provide continuous. Oh, yes, important. and but there is also the other discussion about how the pandemic puts a, a very different um, aspect, you know, bring a very different discussion on this, because one thing that the religion organization are always very good at is mobilize volunteers, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like they did in Tohoku. But what happened with the pandemic is the, the thing that they couldn't do was mobilize volunteers. Mm -hmm because it was dangerous for the volunteer itself and dangerous for the people they wanted to help. So if you, there's been study done uh, that, you know, if you are on the streets, it was much more, uh, more of risk uh, with, with COVID that in, in, in other situations. So one thing the Hito no Kai had to do was in, to reduce drastically the number of volunteer, but at the same time increase uh, the distribution of food because mm -hmm. a lot of the previously available government um, avenue for food or shelter were shut down yeah. because of, of the of the um, of the pandemic. So it added another layer of challenge for religion organizations. So they also had to think how operate differently mm -hmm. uh, when they could not mm -hmm. just call their volunteer mm -hmm. and send them or mobilize them. Even the food was like. It was exactly right. yeah. You mentioned at the beginning that you mm. remember when you we, did yes, the onigiri yes. with them, and Hand this is how, how you use the volunteer mm. used to meet at the temple, prepare the, the onigiri, which was a very nice communal yeah. activities, and then distribute them. But of course, it, it, the pandemic was the first mm. thing they had to stop and moved oh. into uh, pre-made both bento, mm. and also they had to add mask. Of mm. course, as, as, as other item to the package of distribution mm. that they didn't they didn't use before. And it affected uh, you as a researcher, is that correct? When you flew to Japan, you had to quarantine. Quarantine. So yeah, I was one of the very few lucky ones that were admitted into Japan as a researcher mm. in October uh, 2021, uh, thanks to the Japan Foundation um, Fellowship. Mm. But I had to quarantine. Yeah, for with the bento. first <laughs> 10 days with bento uh, every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, definitely, it, it's definitely impacted quite a lot the, the interaction um, and mm -hmm. how those organizations um, also manage the expectation of both the, the people and the volunteers. So it's, mm -hmm. it, it, I think it's been a quite interesting, challenging moment mm -hmm. for them as well. And it raises ethical issues for us as researchers, of course. I was in a similar dilemma. I was in Japan, uh, Nanzan University at the time. Um, and at first I didn't really know, how, like, should I go to Tokyo? Probably mm -hmm. not the best time. So I, I had to you know, balance all these questions and concerns and you know um but then i received a little grant to research <laughs> buddhist responses to the pandemic so and i'm very i think it's it's especially in times of crisis or during the pandemic it's a, uh, to conduct field work i don't know what do you think i think it's very important to capture these transformations as they take place at least in a somewhat safe way but it uh, you can't just yeah. stop the relief initiative relief initiatives on one hand you can also not stop the research about it and these crucial watershed moments. The good thing is that, of course, we, we had access to a lot of discussion online, online. and a lot of material and uh, a lot of availability of the people to respond. But at the same time, some of these organizations was really under a lot of pressure, especially mm. at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, mm. where a lot of services were closed. Mm -hmm. um, one thing, for example, in, in Tokyo that impacted organizations like Hitosaji no Kai was the manga kisa. So those mm -hmm. cafes where you can go and, and read comics and manga, um, stay there for hours and even over 
night, they are very cheap place to stay, even cheaper than hotel. Those places closed down, meaning that there were more people that didn't have a place Who to stay. Who used to live there practically, right? Yeah. Didn't have a place to stay. So for a while at the beginning, there was this kind of new emergency of mm -hmm. there were more people on the street and, and less people able to, to do the distribution mm -hmm. of food and help them. Um, I think the situation now, of course, is going is, is slightly better, although they, as far as I know, they haven't reopened fully to volunteer as mm. in pre-2020 period, mm. because it's, it's still ongoing and they are dealing with very vulnerable uh, population, which is something, as you say, as a researcher, we also mm. need to keep, to keep in mind. Mm. So one thing I did when I was in Tokyo, for example, was to walk a lot, uh, mm. avoid public transport. Mm. I didn't leave that far from Minami Senju, uh, Sanya, so it was about an hour walk mm. for where I stay, so I often just walk there. There was a way to avoid crowded, mm. crowded space or try to just get one train in the no rush hour with less people as possible and of course mask. Mm. Uh, but walking has also allowed me to understand much better the connection with the with the area mm. so i was trying to take different routes every time mm. i went there um and and just try to stop and have a feel of the area and mm. look at who was there what people were there in the street at different time uh, during the day so it was actually really part of, of the mm. study in, in a sense. and you lived there is that correct you told me before yes or that's very really, very interesting <laughs> coincidence that so the first time i went to japan more than 20 years ago <laughs> um i didn't have much many mon much money at all mm. uh, so a friend introduced me to a family in minami senju mm. uh, that was looking for someone to rent one room mm. in their house it was an old couple and they were running a, a small bar so they were almost never there mm. so i rented this place in one of the areas in Tokyo, I barely knew it existed and mm. definitely not the image of Tokyo. There is a reason for that. We um, don't, in the guides of to Tokyo, we maybe we see Asakusa and Soji, right? But that's about it. But in not Minami Senju. Yeah, Tokyo Tower, <laughs> maybe. Then, right? That's about it, right? And Explore Japan beyond yeah. the popular places. Exactly. And now Minami Senju has a very nice train station at the time it didn't mm. and uh, at the time too, I usually walk a lot around mm. cities and that mm. one day I was just exploring the area and I ended up in the shopping street I mentioned before mm -hmm. the Hirohakai uh, Shotengai the and roof, uh, the uh, one uh, that I mentioned before and at the time it was still active uh, the, most of the shops were still open and there was all this long line of men sleeping uh, on on the street, on, on, on that um, shopping street. And that was very impactful. It was mm. an image of Tokyo that I never thought about. Mm. Um, so what I did after was to uh, go back and, and trying to find more uh, you know, trying to find out more about that place. Uh, so I then find Tom Gill uh, work mm -hmm. on Yoseba on this day labor market area in, in Yokohama, but in talking more about Japan and Sanya's Blues, another work that a book that was written mm -hmm. on, on the area. So I started exploring more. So it's quite interesting then 20 years later, I'm back um, in Minami Senju. Um, We're also and, happy and, that you're <laughs> this research seriously without this background it's really difficult to find your way in, i think into this kind of understanding and grasping the context and the key questions at stake so very much looking forward to future yes, publications <laughs> on this yeah okay and stay you. tuned for the next uh, <laughs> video about the arrival and inauguration of the two-ton cannon <laughs> statue from vietnam yeah so shall we talk about Dayonji next time? Yeah, yes, please. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Most certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Erika. Thank you, Tim. Thank you nice. for watching. <laughs> <laughs>